everybody, Martin that's licking feathers again today. I'm tying Peter Ross. So a marmite fly this, some folk really don't like it. But I reckon it's pretty good. It can be good on midge feeders. Um, I mean it's quite like a duck fly with the these duck fly patterns. Tied in a range of sizes it can be quite effective. As always, I'll put a materials list in the description, along with a link to the Patreon page for anybody that wants to support the channel. Join the monthly fly tying classes that we do online uh, and enter the giveaways. You can also subscribe, hit the bell button so you get notified of the new videos, share the videos, that's all appreciated. So I've got my hook in my vise, this is a size 12, camera's on B175. Um, the one that I had on earlier was a size 10. Coming to the end of this spool and the tag end is free there. Um, 10, well, 6s for see through if you're in, it's more of a sort of bait fish imitation. Down to about a 14 um, as a sort of midge pattern. It's quite versatile. I've ran on some Uni 8 and 12 in black and for the tail I'm going to tie in some golden pheasant tippets. I've sized the feather so that the distance between the bars is about a shank length. I'm going to come in, cut off Grab the feather, come around my scissors, cut off four or five, maybe six, put that away. And then, as you can see, just if I hold that there, that's a lot of shank length. Now, you don't want to be switching hands, really, because um, you can disturb the the alignment of the feather but that was just to show you. So catch this in at the barb. On top of the shank with a black bar just at the back of the body there. And then I'll tie in my ribbing material which is just silver wire. Catch that in. We'll just draw it in so it's like the body length couple of wraps, put that in a bit more, and then I'll trim the waste pieces of that golden pheasant, and I'm just going to wrap forward, creating a smooth base of thread. Again, keep it smooth, don't create any bumps, no stop. Just shy of the back of the body. I'll get my tinsel for the rear section of the body, the rear half. Just a medium tinsel is fine. This is just the uni mylar. We catch it in, draw it back, and I've left a tinsel with or half a tinsel width, clear at the back of the tail there. And then just the same thing again, just tidy up, keep everything nice and smooth. If you keep your tread wraps perfectly straight against the hook, the tinsel will not try to wrap, the other waste piece will not try to wrap on you. Stop there, and then we'll just come up, get that first turn in, straight. Don't get a bump. And then just come up. And I always like to come up a wee bit further than what the length of the silver is going to be in the finished fly. So that I can run the dubbing back over the top 
and there's like never any space, it's just sort of the body's all ble bleeding into itself or blending into one piece. Now we'll just give that a check, that's fine. You have a choice here, some folk like to rib all the way up, um, but I actually prefer, I just like to rib the tinsel and let the dubbing be a bit scruffier. So, I mean it's a fishing fly so I want that movement. So we'll take a straight turn with the wire at the back and then we'll come up the body. Four turns, let into that fifth one. Catch it off. As I say, if you prefer, you can dub the front section first and then rub it. But a red seal for, and it's fluorescent red actually. Don't need a huge amount, just get it in. And then I'll we'll come back and I'll make sure that dubbing comes on to the start of the tinsel and dub myself a wee ball of red for and as I say I like to just I let it be a wee bit scruffy you can come in and get a wee poke with your needle Now, traditionally you would tie the hackle, right? But as I did in the, as I do in a lot of my winged wet flies, I like to put the hackle in front because you get more movement and it is a better fishing fly. So I'm going to just get a, a teal feather. That looks alright. I'm going to roll the wing, right? I'm not going to bother trying to make it super tidy. Um, I'm going to take out a slip. I like. I don't like the wing too heavy in these um, three sort of three wing widths or so. If you want it thicker, um, somebody asked me a question on the teal blue and silver video. I said three or four wing widths. If you want a thin thin wing, three widths and wing it and roll it twice. If you want a heavier wing four times and fold it three times because you just that denser wing so I've got about three there strip that off and then I'm just going to roll that wing in one fold and then another it gives me something like that and it's not the neatest if you get a wee lick and I'll moisten it You can sort of, it'll, you can, it'll control it and you'll see sort of roughly the length and the shape you're going to get. Now, when you fish it, it'll open up, but that's good. That's more movement. Length, short of the tail. So, sort of two thirds of the way into the tail or so is fine for me. Pinch, th pinch and loop that in. See how you're sitting. That'll do nice. Two or three turns just to lock it in place. I'm quite happy with that. You can see there it's coming, it's two thirds of the length of the tail. Trim the waist. Got a wee bit of wax in my thread. I'll just tidy up this head. Get these butts tied in nice and secure. Tie back. Oh, I like that. And got a black hackle, black hen. Um, don't be shy with the fibre length, it can be, again, you can make it a reasonably long hackle because all we're looking for is movement. Something like that. Hmm. This, this cape's getting quite well picked. we 
tight end by the tip. Sometimes it's easier just to use your hackle pliers to come in and so you can expose that. Make sure there's wax. Catch them in. Three turns down, fold it back. Three turns. That's, that tip's very short, so I think I'll just leave it. And you can barely see it. It'll be lost behind the hackle. I'm just going to fold the hackle and wait as I wind it. And And I like a fair bit of hackle as well. Um, there's three, three and a half turns. Catch it off. Trim away the waste. Tidy up. That stem was a wee bit thick, so I just I didn't bother doubling it. Once you're happy with the size and shape of your head, which I am, I'll come in and what finish. And another. And I'm using the whip finish as well to sort of finalise the shape of the head. Nice and tight. And a couple of coats of varnish. And the, oops, and the fly's done. Don't get it on the hackle, just splurge it over the eye. And it go into the thread wraps. And then you can come in and clean the Clean out the hook eye with your needle. There you go, that's the Peter Ross. As I say, it's a kind of love it or hate it pattern, but it does catch fish. Um, it's fairly simple. I mean, you look at it in this size and smaller, and it's quite clearly a lot of duck fly. Or a midge pattern, a bit bigger, it might be a fry pattern. So, I hope that was useful. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up below and subscribe to the channel. Tight lines, guys. Bye.